Uh, and then there was the live out mobile lifestyle where, well, now we're cool urbanites. We eat out at the cafes and we go here and we go there. Here at home, we've got a kitchen that's big enough to cater for 20 people, but, you know, we just make toast there. <laughs> and then there's the renovation obsession, you know, constantly remodeling the, the house. And uh, the move to the inner city feel like we're real urbanites, like we're living in New York, we'll live in a high-rise apartment. And perhaps the most pervasive one of all, the move to country living. Let's escape suburbia and go out to the country. And of course, what do we create? Basically the super suburb, where out in the rural landscape, the same lifestyle and patterns are effectively repeated on a, a much more unsustainable scale. And then there's another set of responses that could be broadly called environmental responses. We had improved public transport, uh, to how we can get people out of their cars. Now I don't think this is Auckland's new light rail system. Uh, it's actually Basel in Switzerland. Uh, sorry to get your hopes up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it would be great, wouldn't it, to have things like that. Um, and uh, then there was the focus on building insulation and energy efficiency. Uh, how do we reduce this constant escalation in uh, demand for electricity, uh, gas, etc.? And driven around the major concern about greenhouse gas emissions. So we did things like convince people to change from wood heaters and, um, and in Australia, coal-fired electricity to everyone should burn natural gas because that involves less greenhouse gas emissions. Well, folks, we just burnt our uh, children and grandchildren's inheritance of high-quality transport fuels. Sorry. Um, but anyway, we did things like that. It's interesting that in the cold capitals of Australia, in Canberra, Hobart and Melbourne, virtually all the building stock was uninsulated 40 years ago. Virtually all of it is now insulated, but the energy consumption in heating has gone up. This indicates we need to do some serious research uh, about the causes of this, which I think are actually behavioural uh, change. They might also be that the insulation is breaking down in all these buildings because it was done really poorly. <laughs> Uh, but there's some very serious issues about we've done all this stuff and yet we still seem to be going backwards by a lot of measures. We've also had the focus on urban green space and water sensitive urban design. How do we get water flowing from our urban environments instead of these huge rushes uh, down stormwater drains to, to more natural flows and filtered um, to prevent pollution of rivers and waterways. Um, all very good stuff, but all with a, in a very limited concept um, of sustainability. Similarly, the idea that we should have all these parks um, uh, that a breathing space in the cities um, has been uh, part of that, but still very limited notions uh, in terms of the problems we're facing in the future. In Australia especially, we've had native landscaping for water conservation and ideas around biodiversity uh, conservation. Um, an idea that has some merit but has really been way overblown as almost the symbol of what a sustainable city is about, is about its mantle of green uh, indigenous vegetation. A very misplaced idea. So, how's all this playing out back in Aussie Street in the 1990s, uh, the decade of ageing and infill? Well, the couple with our kids are now pretty elderly at number one, uh, but they're still very solidly um, in place, but they've well and truly given up on the garden out the back. Uh, it's just an irrigated mown grass at the moment. They actually cut down the, the fruit trees because he, well, he was climbing the, the apple trees to prune them and he had an accident and got a broken hip and 
he got so pissed off with it all that he had the apple trees cut down. So, now, at number two, the elderly couple there, their kids are, I don't know, on the other side of the world somewhere, and they're getting quite frail, and they're moving to a nursing home. Um, and, oh, what's happened out the front? Oh, the gum tree was getting sick, and it's died too. Okay, um, now, at number three, um, there's the empty nest baby boomers. Um, they're retiring to Queenstown, Queensland. Yeah, maybe that was Queenstown. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, and at number four, there's a new developer owner has bought the place, and he's just wiped out the garden and the carport, and um, done the thing that the planners um, have allowed everyone to do done the infill development of their 180 square brick veneer in the, in the backyard. And then of course there's the concrete driveway and all around the house and the, the new garage and carport. And then the council made him put in this stormwater detention system down the driveway with this whopping great tank that could be a water tank but it's designed for the water to all drain away so that the public stormwater system isn't overloaded. And he's put in the drip irrigated ornamental garden uh, out the front that's the zero maintenance garden. The new tenants move in. There's a separated working mother with two teenage kids um, in the front place. And the neighbours sort of don't really see her. She, I think she's working two jobs actually. And then out the back, there's a young working couple with no kids and they don't seem to ever appear either. But um, anyway, so uh, the people count in Aussie Street is down to 11. And um, the old people are there, but they're sort of um, not going to be there for that much longer. So there's a whole sort of like turnover um, about to happen, it seems, at number one, two, and three. Now. There's a lot more built assets here, um, and there's radically uh, less home-based production. So what if available energy is in decline? A falling energy base for society expands all of the existing problems in suburbia as well as elsewhere. The cost of services, both the cost to maintain those existing services and to build new infrastructure rapidly uh, rises. The cost of food rises as long distance transport of perishable food becomes more expensive. And in countries like Australia, the water problem um, also becomes more severe. This falling energy base also brings a lot of the problems back home in the forms of terrorism, refugees, uh, recession, if not uh, global depression. So all of these issues start to intensify, they're not just on the other side of the world, they're here at home. And this falling energy base makes current urban design strategies ineffective um, and in many cases counterproductive. But there's a lot of positives with energy descent. And some of those are that it will drive creative adaption and innovation like we have never seen. And it will help overcome obsessions and addictions. People will start focusing on, oh, what is really important? Let's get on with it. And it will renew community spirit and solidarity. So what are the suburban prospects in this energy descent future? Are we looking at the end of suburbia or the retrofit of suburbia? The possibilities of home-based work, cottage industries, uh, telecommuting, could these provide a stepping stone that instead of uh, sub suburban existence being totally dependent on working somewhere else, that, that it's, the economy starts to relocate where people live? 